gonna take a sentimental journey gonna set my heart at ease gonna make a sentimental journey to renew old memories I've got my bag got my reservation spend each dime I could afford the single screen cinemas most of us grew up with are a vanishing breed in their place giant multiplexes some with restaurants and coffee bars like here at the Century Theaters in Evanston I'm Victoria Lautman. Today we're going to take a look at the changing face of movie theaters, where they've come from, where they're going, and how they've been forced to adapt in the 21st century for their very survival. When movies were the most popular art form in America, exhibitors Balaban and Katz built two of the most opulent movie palaces of their time, the Uptown in 1925 and the Chicago Theater in 1921. Generally, a movie palace means a very large building with a stage, with an organ, with probably a balcony, with uh, a lavish exterior and huge capacity. By 1929, Chicago had 12 theaters with more than 3,000 seating capacity and 20 of them with more than 2,000 capacity. And altogether, counting all the cinemas, just within the city limits, there were more than 800 cinemas in Chicago. Tell me about when the music box started, and it's not a movie palace, but what was it at the time? Well, I think it was considered like maybe the baby sister uh, or the, the sibling to the major palaces that were downtown. This theater was built in 1929, and for that day, it's quite small. And the reason for that is uh, when a film premiered back then, they would premiere at the big palaces downtown, the Chicago Theater, let's say. Then eventually, they would move to the neighborhood theaters like the music box. It's quite an event to come see a film here. On weekend nights we have the organist playing, so that adds a little bonus. Another wonderful movie palace is the Pickwick Theater. This Art Deco former vaudeville house was built by the mayor of Park Ridge in 1928. It seats 1400. The Pickwick in Park Ridge is a wonderful building. It's a fully equipped movie palace. It has a stage, it has an organ. It's never been compromised. It's been maintained over the years. Determination and passion are two key ingredients to longevity, which a lot of independent theater owners just couldn't sustain. The owners of the Pickwick Theater have succeeded. Well, an independent basically means you're on your own now. I mean, uh, when, when we first got in the business, everybody in that time, a lot of, there was a lot, about half the market, people own their own theater. I think now there may be a handful of us left. Barnes & Noble approached me about five years ago about turning it into a bookstore. And at the time, we never got past it because absolutely there was no way I was going to convert it. You got a dollar, two, you got a yep. two and a half, three, but I got a yeah. dollar, get three, but I got four, four, but I get five. Other theaters have not been so lucky. The old Orchard Theater in Skokie recently closed its doors after 30 years of showing first run movies. Major chains such as Lowe's Cineplex, General Cinema, and Meridian Entertainment Group have closed theaters in and around Chicago in recent months due to a market with just too many screens. The Pickwick Theatre Council was founded in 1999 as a grassroots community group to save the Pickwick Theatre. And it became very clear to us early in our first year that we would be able to do a variety of live shows here. That the important thing is to get audiences into the space and show them what's possible. The Organic Theatre Company just ended its first season at the Pickwick, which included a run of Romeo and Juliet. Film critic and author of the book Movie Wars, Jonathan Rosenbaum, talked with me about his thoughts on the future of movie theaters in Chicago. So Jonathan, what do you think it takes to survive in the current film theater climate? Well, I'm not a businessman, but at the same time, I would think, I think if you offer people more choices, and if you think in terms of long-term investments, which nobody does now, then you can build markets. What has been happening, at least in filmmaking, also in theater construction, is you do exhaust existing markets, not that you create new ones. But maybe that's beginning to change, at least if we're getting more foreign films. I do think that there's something about the theaters that are being built now that are not user-friendly in the way that they were in the old days, because they don't appeal to the imagination. Going to a, movie, a big movie theater 
in the first half of the century was something like halfway between going to Disneyland and going to a town hall meeting. Some new theaters have intentionally tried to bring back that magical movie-going experience. Welcome to the future of going to the movies in a grand style. The Century Theaters in Evanston opened in 2001 with 18 screens, six of which are dedicated to art, foreign language, and independent films. David, how do you feel about the fact that so many of the movie palaces that this theater is trying to evoke and other single screen theaters are hitting the dust and you guys are thriving? Well, you know, it has a lot to do with Century Theaters paying attention to detail, knowing the market around them, knowing what people want not just uh, sticking to the one or two screens and depending on a good movie to come along to keep them alive. Century Theatres pays attention to detail, make sure that uh, not only they have a beautiful clean theater that's well staffed, uh, there's always somebody to serve them, the customer service details are there, they always know when they come in, not only they're going to get a good movie, but they're going to get serviced well. Survival depends on having a niche that's unique. For the music box, this means first-run art and foreign films, and for the Pickwick, it's combining second-run and first-run movies with live shows. Well, I think the future is very good. As long as we continue to seek out the best in international cinema, and as long as audiences in Chicago are willing to see something out of the ordinary. Theaters do well for the community. Cinema is a part of the American experience. What we know of as cinema business is something that is uniquely American. I think there will always be the market for a film exhibited in a nice, comfortable, posh public place where the whole experience that we Americans have been enjoying for years is still available rather than just a little screening room. 